Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to look again at allocative efficiency, but in regards to an output a graph as opposed to an input graph. And the example that we're going to look at is um, panic buying. In terms of the COVID pandemic, you might see articles or you can Google articles about toilet paper shortages as a result of panic buying during the COVID lockdown. People quickly running out, buying some necessities, perhaps even irrationally buying too much of a particular necessity, such as toilet paper, and then stores having empty shelves as a result of that panic buying. So that's gonna be our applied example. So here we have a graph. Again, a competitive free market, uh, looking again at the idea of allocative efficiency, and our scenario or graph is looking at the market for toilet paper during the 2020, maybe we can make a note, this is the 2020 COVID uh, lockdown, okay? And toilet paper is consumed by the household. Um, so toilet paper in this case is an output. This is not an input graph as we've done in previous videos, but this is an output graph. So the household, Perhaps I'll put this in blue. Households is uh, demanding the toilet paper and uh, toilet paper producing firms are the supply. So the firm is the supply. So we have an upward sloping supply curve supply S1 equals marginal cost. Then we have our downward sloping demand for toilet paper by households. This is D1 equal to marginal benefit. All right, and let's just uh, start with the particular price set for toilet paper that's below the market equilibrium as a result of the panic buying. So here we have price set perhaps too low we're at P1, and at P1, we have the households demanding toilet paper at point B, setting a quantity demanded at Q1. So here's our quantity demanded at Q1, and the quantity supplied by toilet making firms, toilet paper making firms, is at, oh, actually we'll call this Q1, and we'll call this Q2. My coin supplied right here at Q1, at point A. Okay, so the free market's operating at this point at the price of P1, coin demanded by households is at Q2, while the coin supplied by firms is at Q1, and we'll notice that the quantity demanded is greater than the coin supplied, thus we're facing excess demand, which is creating a shortage a shortage of toilet paper. Now, look at QS. We want to see what's happening in terms of the allocation of goods and services. So we first look at the quantity supplied, and at the quantity supplied, we just go straight up to compare supply, the supply curve to the demand curve. Here, we notice that the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal cost. So at Q1, which again, we're going to remember, that's our quantity supplied at that price of P1, the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal cost, which is an under allocation of resources to producing the quantity of toilet paper desired by society. And that creates a welfare loss, right? which is this triangular area here. The shaded triangular area is representing the welfare loss. Society has lost opportunity to allocate more resources to producing toilet paper to meet the irrational demands of people who are panic buying. Okay, so whenever there's a shortage, that puts upward pressure on price. So price begins to rise. Price is rising to reallocate resources to meet the quantity desired by society. So as price rises to point C, from P1 to P2, 
P2, we're going to have a new equilibrium quantity established at Q3. Or maybe I'll make a note that the quantity of demand before it was greater. Um, so as price rises from P1 to P2, the quantity supplied by toilet paper making firms starts rising. They're incentivized by the higher price because their producer surplus is increasing. While households are decreasing their quantity of demand for toilet paper uh, until we reach point C. And at point C, marginal cost equals marginal benefit, and we've achieved an allocatively efficient outcome. Okay, so just a few notes. At P1, we notice that the quantity demanded at Q2 is greater than the quantity supplied at Q1, which creates a shortage. The shortage places upward pressure on price. Price rises from P1 to P2, and we see that the quantity supplied rises from Q1 to Q3, while the quantity demanded falls from Q2 to Q3 until we reach a point where S1 equals D1 at a price of P2 and a quantity of Q3 where quantity supply equals quantity demanded and as well where marginal cost equals marginal benefit, thus it's allocatively efficient. So let's go ahead and analyze this as we would for a paper exam. As can be seen, we have a graph labeled graph A, which is the market for toilet paper. In this case, it is an output. We're measuring quantity on the x-axis, price on the y-axis. We have an upward supply curve, upward, upward sloping supply curve labeled S1 equal to marginal cost, MC1. Uh, we have a downward sloping demand curve according to the law of demand, labeled D1 equal to our marginal benefit. And we are starting off with a price of P1. At P1, the quantity demanded is at point B or Q2, while the quantity supplied by firms is at point A or Q1. We notice that at the price of P1, the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied, creating a shortage or excess demand. That puts upward pressure on price. Now, before we talk about that, let's first look at the quantity supplied at a price of P1. The quantity supplied at Q1 demonstrates that the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal cost, leading to an underallocation of resources to producing the quantity of toilet paper desired for society. Um, thus, a welfare loss is generated. You can just make a note that a welfare loss is created as a result. The shortage creates uh, puts upward pressure on price. It rises from P1 to P2. And as it rises, the quantity supplied increases from point A to point C or from Q1 to Q3 while the quantity demanded decreases from Q2 to Q3 or moves from point B to point C on the demand curve. At a new equilibrium where S1 equals D1, a new equilibrium price is established at P2 with a new equilibrium quantity established at Q3 where quantity supplied equals quantity demanded, and also at point C, MC equals MB, thus it is an allocatively efficient outcome. Okay, and that's it. We're going to do one more graph. Uh, for an output market, looking at what happens when the price is set above the free market equilibrium. If you have any questions, feel free to comment, and don't forget to subscribe and like. Thank you so much.